Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, the goddess update has finally arrived in the games and many players are confused and anxious about how the gacha system actually works after the update. So for today's videos, I'm going to guide you through step by steps on how to convert your level 440 legendary equipment into a level 460 goddess equipment as well as providing you guys some of the roadmap of what you should be doing for the goddess update. Now the first thing that you probably already noticed is that your character is completely naked and all your items disappear from your character. The first thing you want to do is actually talk to the market NPC located in any of the cities, capetas, or set of familian to retrieve your items by clicking on the market retreat tab. So once you click on that, you're going to retrieve every single item that was equipped on your character before the update. Next up, you are going to unequip your red up and fixed anchors from your legendary equipment. The reason why you want to do this is because you are going to extract your old Spike Warrior Inker but also the Dynamic and Goddess Inker. There are a few ways to actually equip your Inker. The first one is going to be a premium tokens. This one is going to cost more silver to equip but you can equip your Inker anywhere that you want. The second one is going to be Fermidian Blacksmith which located right next to the Fermidian's public house as you can see here on my mini maps. You are going to talk to a blacksmith's name, Taylor Villas. This blacksmith will have an option for you to equip your fixed and rider status anchor as the last two options. Next up, we are going to craft or transfer the level 440 legendary equipment into a level 460 goddess equipment. Now, there are a few key requirements in order to do this. Your legendary level 440 must have transcendent 10 and plus 11 enhancements in order to reserve or keep the enhancement from your legendary into the goddess equipment. As you can see here, my secondary weapons has a plus 15 and transcendent 9. It will not keep the enhancements from the legendary into the goddess equipment. And to my next weapons, this weapon has a transcendent 10 and plus 16, which enable me to keep the enhancement onto the goddess equipment. The enhancement will lower down a little bit, but the values that you are going to get from my goddess equipment compared to a level 440 legendary equipment is way higher. Now, you're probably wondering, what is a good number of enhancements with transcendent 10 to convert to a goddess equipment. I personally would say stick around plus 15. Plus 15 and plus 16 will give you a plus 10 goddess enhancement values and getting to a plus 14 goddess enhancement values is quite easy by the way. I actually did this a while ago and I managed to get a plus 14 goddess equipment without having to rely on a plus 21 legendary equipment just to transfer and get the plus 14. So if anything, I would recommend keeping around your legendary equipment as plus 15 and then convert it to the goddess equipment. So this way you can actually save a little bit of resources from getting your plus 21 and then focus on getting plus 14 or higher for the goddess equipment later on. Next up is probably one of the biggest questions when it comes to the goddess equipment. Should you convert your legendary equipment to the goddess right away or should you wait until you have everything ready? In my own opinion, you can actually use the goddess equipment without having a second set. As you can see here on my left, I do have my status open and on my right, I do have my goddess equipment and I have a second set of goddess equipment not equipped on the second set. This is a dual weapon system which allows your character to actually use the skill of a different weapon. But in this case, the secondary goddess set equipment will also increase by the attack because it averaged out the difference between two different set of weapons. It also allowed me to equip two different class Vibora, which in this case is going to be Quivix and Plactos of Vibora, and then two X coordinations. Once you are ready to transfer your legendary equipment to the goddess equipment, click on equipment succession and type in inheritance. Make sure it's a capital I and a dollar low cap I. Go ahead and click OK and you have successfully transferred your legendary into the goddess equipment. Now the good thing about the succession system is that it allows me to choose any type of goddess weapons regardless of which type of legendary equipment that I use in order to transfer into the goddess version which is quite convenient by the way. Now, by any chance that you don't want to convert your legendary equipment into the goddess equipment, you actually can craft the goddess equipment by clicking on the four tabs. There are two items that is required for this. One of them is the refined Basila scale, which you can obtain it from the goddess ray, and the other one is magic stone. Magic stone is available through our specific content like DCP, soul hunts, as well as wicked boss ray. Now, one thing I do want to point out about the goddess armors, you need to be careful which armor that you choose. 
It is possible that you can craft the boots or gloves or the bottles by using the top armor. So there are some chances and in most cases, people will mess up. I have seen a lot of people have done this before and they actually mess up and choose the wrong armor pieces. So take your time, don't rush and click on very specific item that you want. Make sure you read through it. Make sure that you click on the letter armor and read the text that it is the letter armor for your character. Now, by any chance that you craft the wrong items for your character, you can actually switch it with another items by using the six tab of the goddess UI. Now, for example, I have a two hand weapons, which I don't really want. I can switch it to a one hand sword or maybe a bow or any other type of equipment. This also applies for the armor as well. I simply drag the armors onto the UIs and I can switch the letter into a cloud armor, which is pretty convenient by the way, because you only need one specific item which is a level 460 equipment terms. You can actually get this from the Wing of Vivor NPCs, which is located in Calpeta Cities. Go ahead and talk to her and click on the premium tabs and scroll all the way down. You will find the level 460 equipment terms, which is pretty convenient by the way, because it's much cheaper compared to any other low level term. Now, before we go further, there is actually an event called Hawk Week Events. This event will start from August 24th all the way to September 7th, which lasts roughly two weeks. This event will give you every single endgame items, which include the goddess equipment, two boxes, your main weapon, and then sub weapons. You will get a full set of goddess equipment as well for the armors. And this box, the armor selection box, will give you a choice of play armor, leather armor, and cloud armor. I recommend getting a leather armor, by the way. So if you're a DPS for the tank, you definitely want to get the play armor. And then for the support, we want to get the cloud armors. You also get a bunch of other good items as well, like Vibor Vision and Tradable Version, which you can select any Vibor of your choice. You also get the Arch Selection Box, which is a part of a game equipment progression, but also a very strong equipment that allow your character to trigger a special effect to deal more damage. Now, the good thing about this event is that you need to find an event NPC located in any of the city. My personal favorite would be the fishing spot in the north area of Capetta. You talk to the NPC and click on receive the hot week reward and it's gonna give you every single item related to the hot week event. Now, keep in mind that you need a level 50 catcher and above in order to receive the reward and it can be anybody's. It can be the current player, the new and return player as well. Next up, once you craft the goddess equipment, you want to find the blacksmith in town or a precious shop to identify the equipment. The reason why you want to do this is because goddess equipment come with a random status and you need to identify it. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that these equipments are very similar to this and Savinos or the primary status gears that you get it from the channel or the field farming. One thing I do want to point out that these equipments does bound to your catcher upon equipped. So make sure that you transfer the items to this character that you want to equip on otherwise once you equip this it's bound to the character forever next up we are going to modify the goddess equipments now you can actually use the mysterious magic fires just to reroll the status until you get the perfect lines for the goddess equipments there is a maximum of four lines for every single piece of goddess equipment which include the weapons and the armor as well so make sure you're getting the four lines the next one is going to be the blue sandra i personally would reroll the status of the lines once i get the four lines so i'll be able to find the perfect line for my catcher now because i'm using Krivix P and cool shaders i'm actually gonna roll for intelligence cons and then medium offset along with crit rate which is quite convenient by the way as the status provide me the best possible damage output but also the best defense bonuses against endgame content additionally the goddess equipment does have a minimums and maximum values for the random status here's the whole list by the way and feel free to pause the videos as long as you need to to check out the whole list in my own opinions, if I'm using Magic DPS, I would go for End, Con, Crit Rate, and Medium Offsets. Same thing with the physical build as well, Strength, Cons, Medium Offset, and Crit Rate. And then for the weapons, I personally would go for at least one or two weapons, especially for the main and the sub weapon. I would go for Accuracy, Block Penetration, and Crit Rate along with the Con status. Now because we only get 4 lines, you can actually just maximize our different type of status that you want to for your character. 
after you have successfully modified the random status for your goddess equipment the next thing we're going to do is actually engraving those random status to save it later on now this is the engraving system you have three different tabs by the way you have the save engraving which allows you to save the goddess status you have the apply engravings which apply the status onto your equipment and then you have the anchor tab now anchor tab is actually the most important ones which allow you to save those Inker status from your original legendary equipment which is quite convenient by the way now one thing i do want to point out is that this will only available if you have the inkers if not then i don't recommend doing this option because inker extraction could take quite a while and it have lower status compared to the goddess equipment so the next thing you're going to do is actually say the engraving and once you click on that it will say successfully and your inkers will disappear from your inventory go ahead and click on apply engraving and it will be available in the tabs go and click on that one and you're about to see it right away now if you already noticed that my garden equipment does already have the random status now if i want to switch to a different status i can actually engrave the one that i have in the storage onto my goddess equipment there is actually a limited amount of engraving available for your catchers unless you have a voucher that can increase the engraving slot so you can see here i have two different ones the next time that i engrave for my top equipment is going to go directly onto the second engraving tab so which is quite convenient i can switch to a different engraving as much as i want wherever i need it and all this engraving right here like i said if i engrave this top armor with cons quit ray block penetration and accuracy that engraving status for the top anchor will go directly onto the second tab of engraving now in order to get more engraving slot you need to use the vouchers which is called the engraving slot 30 days voucher once you click on this you will get five more engraving slot for all your character which is quite convenient in my opinion now there are three different type of engraving slot voucher which include the 30 days 60 day and 90 days the 90 day is actually the most effective ones because it's only going to cost you 58 tp which is like a five to six dollar now one thing i do want to point out is that this is not mandatory in my opinions because if you're just going to focus on one type of bills one type of anchor then you don't have to worry about the engraving slot voucher now if you're going to focus on multiple different catcher multiple different bills then you might want to consider buying this voucher Going back to the engraving system, the first tab is actually the most important one if you're planning to engrave the goddess status into the engraving storage. Now you actually do need an item called engraving stones. This item is obtainable in the new hunting ground which is quite convenient for you to farm. Each stone will give you 5% chance or 100% chance if you have 20 stone. Another way to get this stone is actually talking to the goddess exchange NPC which are available in Capella cities right next to the NPC helper or the goddess statue. Now you're gonna click on the second option and you're gonna trade in your shining silver anchors extractions or the golden version in order to get the engraving stones in my opinion you cannot trade in the event version unfortunately as you can see here in my inventory i do have these golden extraction anchor for the event one also another good thing about the goddess ingredient exchange helpers they actually a lot of options you can actually do here you can do mrs tumpage you can do the zero powder you can do a nuclear powder if you have a tons of nuclear powder you can trade it in for zero powder which is quite convenient in my opinions if you have a lot of mystic tum and you need attribute point you can actually trade it in to get a ton of attribute point ticket the next one is going to be the divine power and then the dark red stones if you have a tons of dark red stones you can trade in for divine power or if you have a lot of divine power you can trade in for the dark red stone and same thing with the legend jewel as well as you can see here you can actually trade it in your old legend jewels that you have for your character for the goddess version and then you also have the vivora skulls this is going to be the untradeable versions from the pay package if you have any of those Another thing I do want to point out is actually the silver exchange rate for the Goddess Get Future Coins. As you can see here on my top right corner, there is actually a golden button. Once you click on it, there is the Merc Bash Shop and then there is the Goddess Shop. Goddess Shop allow you to purchase Goddess items, for example, Aether Gym Socket, Legend Jewels, Engraving Stone as well, along with Magnifier and a bunch of other good stuff in my opinion. If you want to try for those, you can actually exchange points, which allow you to use silver and purchase the Goddess tokens or Goddess coin for the Gabija. Now this one is going to cost you 50 million silver, as you can see here, 10 million, 5 million, 1 million, 100,000 silver. And lastly, we have 1,000 silver. 
Additionally, there are other items as well that you can buy from the shop. For example, 1000 ATP point tickets. We have the potion of holy protection for the new hunting ground. We have the urgent repair kit, which is quite convenient, by the way. We also have different recipes, for example, like goddess blessings, tear stones, and awaken a brace up. And then going to a special ingredients, I don't think a lot of people will use it, to be honest. The level 460 XP essence potion is not worth it, in my opinion. And then we have the permacol solution box. This one, you don't have to buy it to be honest because the event provide you a ton of this to apply the set bonus on your goddess equipment and then going to the materials which is the food tables if you don't have zero to buy all of these you can actually use the goddess token gabija and purchase this instead Next up, we have the Goddess Transcendent System, which will be available in the Goddess Equipment Management tab UIs. As you can see here, you click on the Unveils and you click on the third tab of Transcends. And from here, you can actually choose the amount of stage that you want to transcend your Goddess Equipment. And it's only going to cost you 20 Goddess Blessed Gems. Keep in mind that you cannot transcend Goddess Equipment through the normal NPC like Blacksmith or even the Familian Blacksmith, which is where you transcend your Legendary Equipment. If anything, I would recommend that you transcend your goddess equipment after you convert it from the legendary into the goddess equipment so you can get that 2c 30% damage bonuses for transcend for the goddess equipment. You also want to apply the engine status onto the goddess equipment as well because when you convert from your legendary to the goddess equipment, it's gonna reduce by one third, which you will only have two thirds of the original enchant status. Now, you do need the goddess enchant jewel status in order to do this, by the way. You can get the goddess jewels for the goddess shops or the goddess exchange shops and then in the hunting ground area which is quite convenient by the way also for the goddess shop it's gonna cost you 5000 gabija coins which is like 5 million silver more importantly you can actually get up to a enchant status thanks to the dual weapon system which require you to equip another set of weapons your main weapon and your sub weapon so instead of having six now you have eight going back to the goddess ui you will notice that there is a the enhancement tabs or the upgrade tabs for the goddess equipment and you will notice that there are two different ingredients which require you to plug in the goddess token and refine Vezilla scale now on the bottom right corner you will see a success rate and failure adjust probability there is also another item you can use which is called the enhanced aid which increases the success rate however every time you fail you will get a small portion of failure adjust probability which increases your chance of success rate in the next upgrade which is quite convenient by the way because goddess equipment does not have any potentials which allows you to upgrade infinitely until you get plus 30. now this is only a few ways to get the enhance aid the first one is the goddess helper exchange and the second one is buying it from the tp shop Additionally, the upgrade chance will reduce over the enhancement upgrade. So for examples, from plus 1 to plus 5, you will get 100%, plus 6 will be 80%, and continue to drop all the way down to 1%, starting from plus 19 and 20 and above. Players can obtain the Vasila skills from the Goddess Ray contents. There is three different versions, by the way. There is a solo version, auto mass version, and the hard version. The solo version will give you the refined Vasita scales for your character to upgrade the goddess equipment or craft the goddess items. Now for the auto version, you will get 18 Vasita scale and 18 refined version which is total up to 36. And then for the hard version, you will get 100 Vasita scales and you also get the lottery silver chest which has a chance to give you 300 million silver as a very low chance. You also get reward by additional chance as well. So for the auto master version, you have a chance of getting the goddess one entry voucher for the goddess race which is the hard version and then for the hard version you have a chance of getting enhanced supplements you also get the enhanced supplement and tradable x30 box and then you have the 50 box so there are three different boxes by the way there is a 10 30 and 50 bucks and you also have a chance of getting Vasila scale if you have a token activated there is a chain that you would get the arc zone fragments or the arc zone itself and lastly we have the evolution system for the goddess equipment this is where you upgrade your goddess equipment and add the glowing effect onto your weapon. You actually get 5% more attack for your weapon and then more percent bonus in defense for your armors. So there are a few materials that you need. You need goddess splash gem, you need Vasila scale, you need goddess token for Gabicha, and then lastly you need an item called evolution stone. Evolution stone is obtainable as a low drop rate from the new hunting grounds called the Holy Sanctuary on the first floor and the second floor. 
Next up, we are going to dismantle a few special items. Now, if you have this equipment before the update, you can actually dismantle them to get all your material back, which include the art equipment, the Vibora, the accessory, which include Caroline and Lucifer, and more importantly, the Goddess and Demon God Inkers. So let's go ahead and dismantle them if you have them and you get everything back. Completely 100% refund. So after you dismantle your art, the next thing you're going to do is actually craft the new art equipment from the equipment storage. Go ahead and click on the art category and choose any arts of your choice. I personally got to craft the arch stone version. This one is going to give me all AOE damage for easy farming. You're going to need four arch stone fragments and one refined terranium. For the refined terranium, you just need to right click on terraniums and you get a refined version. Going back to the art storage, the first thing you need to do is actually right click on the material which is refined terranium and for art stone fragments. After you do that, you're going to click on enter. Once you click enter, you have successfully unlocked the art for that specific type. So this is going to be a storm art. The next thing you need to do is actually click create it. Once you click create it, it's going to cost you 100k silver and it's going to give you a low level storm art. Now the reason why it's going to be low level is because you need to upgrade the storm art all over again from the bottoms all the way to the tops. The upgrade process for the art equipment is pretty straightforward. You click on insert on your keyboard and click on sevens for the combined art section. Once you do that, you are going to insert the nuclear powders and other materials in order to upgrade the art from the level ones all the way to level 10. It's going to take quite a while because you have to insert the art and the insert material over and over again. The next one we're going to do is actually divide our equipment. We're going to dismantle it to get everything back. The silver, the transmutator, the condensed Vivora transmutator, and then Vivora visions, which is for necrosis. This one is going to be for the plat doctor. Next, open your equipment storage and type in necrosis for the Vivora category. The next thing you're going to do is actually insert the materials, for, for example, necrosis vision, and then unlock the Vivora. You're going to do this all the way until you unlock the Vivora to level 4. Now, because the Vivora does not require silver anymore, you're gonna use the Goddess Token. The Goddess Tokens is available for the Goddess Shop. You can actually exchange your silver for the Goddess Token if you need to. After your catcher has successfully unlocked the Vivora Visions or the higher level of the Vivora, the next thing you need to do is actually apply the anchors onto the Goddess Equipment. This is basically like applying a set effects onto the equipment. Go ahead and click on it. It's going to cost you 100k silver and you have successfully applied the anchor onto the Goddess Equipment. One thing I do want to remind you guys is that you can only have two unique Vivora. Like in this case, I'm using Crucifix PD and Cool Shader. I'm going to use the Plat Doctor and then Crucifix Vivora. Vora, and then for the rest of the Vibora, I'm going to use coordination. There are situations where people prefer using one unique Vibora, which is like a class Vibora, and then three coordination throughout their equipments. Now, you can apply as many Vibora as you can, but you can only apply two class Vibora, which is in this case, PD and Crivix. As for the condensed Vibora transmutator, you can actually get the recipe to craft that materials in the Femidian City by talking to Televillas Blacksmith. This recipe does require a few materials which include 4 refined Heroclacia, 1 refined Motile Powders, 5 Birkenites, and 3 Serious Stones. For the next equipment, I'm going to dismantle the old Caroline and Lucifer equipment. Now, for the Caroline, it's pretty straightforward. You can dismantle straight up right away. However, for the Lucifer, you need to extract the property first, especially for the Enhancement and Transcendent, in order to dismantle Lucifer. If you try to dismantle Lucifer with Enhancement or Transcendent on it, it will prevent you from doing so. Once you have successfully extracted the property for Lucifer, you can go ahead and dismantle Lucifer to get everything back, which include buying crystal, two different set of accessories, two hearts of fragment, and periums. The next thing you do is actually click on your equipment storage and click on Lucifer storage. Now, after you click on this one, you are going to input every single material that was dismantled from Caroline and Lucifer, input it into the storage, and unlock the Caroline. In order to upgrade to Lucy Fairy, you're gonna click on the same set equipment again and you're gonna input the Luperiums and Tail Harsher Fragments to upgrade the both set equipment, the necklace and the bracelets all the way to Lucy Fairy version. Once you have successfully upgraded your Caroline into Luciferies, go ahead and create a set of Lucifer equipment at a cost of 15 million silver or 5 million per pieces. 
Lastly, the next thing you need to do is actually apply the enhancement and transcendent scroll that you extracted from Lucifer. So this way you'll get that plus 16 or plus 21 or whatever the enhancement and transcendent that you have there on the Lucifer. Now you can put it back onto your equipment. Not only you have to reduce the cost of everything, but also be able to get your equipment up to date after the upgrade. The next items we are going to unlock is going to be the Goddess and Demonic Anchors. So the first thing you need to do is actually extract the old anchors from the character. So you get all the material back. And then go ahead open up the equipment tabs or the equipment stories for the Demonic and Goddess Anchor. Now one thing I do want to point out is that all of this recipe does require two different materials. The first one is going to be Dark Red Stones and the other one is going to be Divine Powers or Debris Powers. So if you have any extra dark red stone or divine power, you can actually go to the goddess exchange NPC and exchange your dark red stone or divine power. Going back to pretty much the demonic and then goddess Inca stories, go ahead and put all the materials and unlock them as soon as you can. And from here, you are going to do the same thing as the Inca. You are going to apply the demonic Inca or the goddess Inca's onto the goddess equipment. Now, in order to upgrade them, you need a blessed transmutator and goddess token. The blessed transmutator is available from the Fairvidia blacksmith, same place that you're gonna buy the transmutator for the Vibora. So it's pretty straightforward and not much different from here. Now, keep in mind that the demonic and goddess Inker can only go all the way up to level three. And finally, we have the set effect. You can actually apply the level 40, 40 legend set effects onto the goddess equipment. There are a lot of options, by the way. For the PvE content, you have Belinta and then you have subs. Now for the PvP, you have Cherish and then for the healer, you have Ready T. I think PvP is only good for Cherish to be honest because every time you kill a player, you can actually reset the cooldown for Cherish and heal yourself but also boost the damage as well. Alright ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for spending your time watching this video all the way from the beginning to the end. I hope this video provides you guys a lot of insight and information about the goddess system and I hope you are having fun with the goddess update. My name is Sarochi and I will see you all in the next video. Peace out. Many times I try to tell you, but I have to go now, achieve my ways. Waiting for the day to live in another holy's name I found my way Some days I make it through And there's a night that never ends So I try out to reaching with the stars But I didn't know what it was